now I'm gonna be moving on to the full bridge rectifier. Now this type of circuit, or it is also called a bridge rectifier, this type of circuit uses four diodes. You can also see the diagram on your screen. So these are the four diodes that we are gonna be using. And the circuit for this one might seem a bit complicated to a few beginners, but yeah, but anyways, it is just hell simple because you're just gonna get more complicated things in electronics in the future. And of course, this circuit is just really important because these things are not at all at use today because these transformers are not u not used in like the po uh, power wall adapters etc because nowadays we use SMPS but the full bridge rectifier is still important for the SMPS as well because the 220 volts is first of all uh, rectified and smoothed out by a full bridge rectifier and using high voltage capacitors so then only the SMPS can function so essentially at the input you're gonna find a full bridge rectifier along with a high voltage capacitor so so this circuit is just really important if you go for the SMPS as well as for the traditional power supplies that uses this kind of transformer so these these type of power supplies I guess were used in 90s etc but nowadays not, uh, these are not used and even i don't use these transformers these are just like old transformer from my projects that i did in uh, i guess six standards or etc so i also use all uh, smps switch mode power supplies so let's just assemble this circuit i'm also going to explain this circuit in detail So guys, over here, I'm gonna explain you this full bridge rectifier circuit. Now first of all, it contains four diodes, okay? So, over here, on these two sides, you're gonna imply your input signal that will be coming from your transformer, okay? So over here, you'll attach the secondary winding of the transformer to the circuit. Okay, this is the transformer. There's the primary winding and this is the secondary winding. So the secondary winding is going to be connected to these two points over here, right here in the circuit. And we are going to draw our output from these two points. So over here, this will be, this will act as a positive. This will act as a negative. Over here, you're going to connect your load. Over here, your load resistor will be connected for, in our case, it is a 100 ohm wire wound resistor. So we're going to connect a 100 ohm wire wound resistor over here. Essentially what is happening in this circuit is, first of all, when this one is positive, I'm talking about the positive half of the sine wave. When this is positive and this is negative, essentially what is going to happen, this diode will conduct electricity and this diode will also conduct electricity. This diode will go into a reverse bias state because the voltage, because this will this will go at a reverse bias stage and th so will this diode. So this will be reverse biased at, th at this point of time and this will also be reverse biased. I'm just gonna erase some of the stuff because it's just getting a bit clustered. Okay, so over here, now what you're gonna get is the current is gonna flow from the secondary winding all the way up to here, pass through this diode go to the load register, come back over here, pass through there, and will pass through this diode over here, okay? So this is the diode number three. This will also conduct electricity, and this will be at a reverse bias state. So will this diode be. So these two will not act in the circuit for the positive half of the sine wave. So it is gonna go from there, there, and will come, come back to the secondary winding of the transformer. Now in the negative half of the sine wave, Okay, so I'm just gonna erase all the things first of all. Okay, so when the sine wave is at its negative half, okay, what is essentially gonna happen is this will become negative, this will become positive, okay? So over here, this diode will conduct electricity. Over here, you can see, uh, this is now, this is positive, this is negative. 
so over here this diode will conduct electricity and this diode will also conduct electricity because these two diodes will be in the forward bias okay so the electricity the current will go from this all the way up to here then will pass from this diode to here so this will essentially again become a positive terminal and this will essentially again become a negative terminal so this will go from the load uh, to the load resistor come back over here come back to there and then pass through this diode and will go back to the secondary winding therefore our circuit will be complete this diode and this diode will not act, act, uh, act in the circuit for the negative half of the sine wave and of course later on we'll be attaching a capacitor to the circuit to filter out all the high frequency components because what we're gonna essentially get is positive bumps like this on the oscilloscope so let's just probe the circuit and see what it looks like you can also rewatch this part if you are having some doubts about this circuit but now let's just probe our circuit so first of all i'm just gonna ground reference my probe over here so this is essentially the negative of the output so this is gonna be the reference for our circuit and now from channel number one let's just probe channel number two to the output of the signal as we usually do so channel number two will attach to one of the leads of the load resistor and over here the channel number two I'm just gonna attach it to the input uh, let's just attach it over here okay so now we are all set so we have just ground referenced our probe and we have attached one of the probe the probe number two to the output of the rectifier circuit and probe number one to the input of our rectifier circuit let's just fire up our oscilloscope and fire up the circuit so over here at the oscilloscope you can see that we are obtaining a beautiful output so this is almost similar so this is identical not almost similar this is identical to the output that we got from our setter type rectifier so i don't know what's just getting disconnected from my pc okay anyways so this is basically the posture bumps that we are getting but on the input you can see that we are getting a weird kind of like what we were getting essentially in the first rectifier circuit that we built so this is because that we have referenced the negative as we have we have taken the reference at the wrong point in our circuit so we have essentially just referenced the negative terminal of the output as a reference so therefore we are getting these kinds of waves so i'll just explain this kind uh, explain this thing like in a later video but anyways you can just like forget channel number one for a second okay let's just focus on channel number two so over here you can see you're just getting this beautiful bumps and now let's just add a capacitor to the mix okay first of all we are again gonna start with a 220 microfarad capacitor in the circuit like we usually do there you go you can see that the bumps have changed like uh, the ripples now we are getting a bit of ripples on the voltage on the output sorry not the voltage we are getting ripples now the ripples are identical to what we were getting for the center tap one because this is essentially the full bridge rectifier will get uh, will get the similar output as a center tap rectifier but the thing is that in this the transformer is like is just running at its like full power because in the center tap one we are wasting power over half the cycle of the sine waves both the sine waves but in this we are gonna be using both the sides of the sine wave we are using positive as well as the negative half of the sine wave so essentially we are just like drawing more power out of the transformer in this circuit so over here you can see the ripples are on 4.35 volts let's just like measure it using the inbuilt measurements also you can see 4.39 volts we are getting as a ripple voltage let's just increase the capacitor a bit to 2200 microfarad now you can see we are getting almost a clean sine wave at our output and you can see the peak to peak voltage is also like really really low because 
the ripples are just really less in this sine wave you can see over here there is some disturbance over here but that may be due to the static noise in the probe but yeah you can see that this is just a really clean output voltage that we are getting over here you can see it's around 512 millivolts the ripple voltage so this is just like extremely good and this thing can be used for certain amplifiers that in which you don't care about the noise much but if you want to decrease the noise further you can also use a linear power regulator that essentially will decrease the voltage of let's just see what we are getting as a voltage on this one first of all okay so the voltage that we are getting is 16.3 volts so we can use a 12 volts linear voltage regulator on this circuit to smooth out the voltage uh, and also decrease the ripples and we can also increase the capacitance and also decrease our load so to re reduce the ripples so right now we the load is around at around uh, i think it's yeah it's it was 100 ohm resistor the wire one resistor was around 100 ohm so the circuit is just w working really well in that case also now let's just move on to the center tap transformer but with this thing with a full bridge rectifier because the center tap transformers are also used with the full bridge rectifier circuit to obtain 0 12 and minus 12 volts okay so let's just move on to that circuit now over here in this circuit what i have done is i've made some changes i'm just taking this center tap transformer for this circuit now what is happening is the outer two windings of the transformer are gonna act as an input to our full bridge rectifier and at the output we are gonna get 24 volts as our output as this is a 12 volts transformer so it is gonna have 12 volts rms across this winding and 12 volts rms across this winding as well so what we are gonna be having is around 24 volts across the white wire and the red wire over here white wire and the red wire just wait for a second yeah this one and the, this one so we're gonna have 24 volts across this winding so therefore i have also used a uh, high voltage capacitor that's the 50 volts capacitor i've used that's rated for 50 volts because my 220 volt the 220 microfarad capacitor is rated at 25 volts maximum so of course i just don't want to take any risk and blow up my capacitor because this capacitor is a bit expensive and yeah of course i just don't want to blow up my capacitors and over here you can see the black wire is gonna act as our ground so if you want to draw 12 volts output from this circuit what you can essentially do is you can just take you can just use this as a reference as a reference ground so this will be at 0 volts the red wire is gonna be at plus 12 volts and the white wire is gonna be at minus 12 volts so you're gonna get a plus minus 12 volt supply so this is how these transformers are used and this is these uh, and this type of configuration is mainly used in function generators etc to generate uh, the uh, two power rails for example the positive as well as the negative power rail now let's just probe the circuit so we are again gonna use this purple wire which is attached to the black wire of the transformer as our reference so i'm just gonna attach it to the ground clamp over here now first of all i'm just gonna probe both the output the positive as well as the negative output of this circuit so this will go to the positive channel number one will go to the positive channel number two will go to the negative one now let's just look at the signals on our oscilloscope now on our oscilloscope you can see the channel number one that is connected to the positive terminal of the output you can see that it is just creating a positive voltage over there and the channel number two that was uh, connected to the negative side of the of the output the negative terminal of the output is just creating a negative voltage over there now let's just measure the voltage okay so what we're gonna do is we're just going to find out the middle of the voltages because that's going to be the effective voltage that we are getting at the output so at channel number one we are getting 13.6 volts as our output voltage and at channel number two we are getting around 14 volts so minus 14 volts as our output voltage so you can see that we have essentially created a power supply that can output plus 12 and minus 12 volts essentially so this is how this center trap transformer is used in real life 
Now guys, this is a laptop power adapter and this is a really old laptop power adapter and it was also broken so I had to fix this thing. What essentially happened was that one of the diodes just like decided to go off. So it just stopped working. Over here you can also see some burnt marks on the PCB. So I have to I had to replace the diodes over here. So I just replaced them with the general purpose diodes. So over here you can see this is where the out input of the uh, laptop power, this is where the laptop power supply receives its input and it just directly goes to the full bridge rectifier that is spawned by these four diodes and here is a 400 volts and that is 47 microfarad capacitor 47 microfarad capacitor that rectifies the input voltage so it just rectifies the 220 volts input voltage and just like uh, outputs around 270 to 300 volts DC and it is just completely flat and then a uh, switching transistor is used this is a switching transistor this is a MOSFET that is used to drive this transformer this is a ferrite core transformer and then the output is drawn accordingly so I'm not just gonna go in detail of the switch mode power supplies but yeah so I just like shot this thing because I wanted to show you that the full bridge rectifier is indeed used in these kinds of application as well so it is not that the technology has just died out or something like that so it is still used so this is a switch mode power supply by the way so that's all for the videos guys video guys I hope you have enjoyed watching my video and it was not just too much for you I may upload this video in two parts or I may make a single part depending upon the time of the video that it's gonna take me to edit the video first of all so I'll see you guys in the next video till then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see ya